Hi, I'm Dr. Tash and welcome to today's episode of Dr. Tash TV. Today, I'll be talking about something I love and that's coffee and caffeine. I love coffee and I know many of you do too because every day I get questions in my clinic about how much coffee should I drink doctor I'm trying to have a baby what should I do about coffee well the interesting thing about coffee is that people respond differently to coffee and the reason why is because we metabolize it differently and guess what there's a gene involved in that as well let me introduce you to CYP1A2 no, it's not the latest character out of a Star Wars movie. It's actually a gene. A gene that expresses itself often in the liver. What this gene does is it makes an enzyme that is responsible for metabolizing 95% of the caffeine that goes into your body. So it's a pretty important gene. Some people have a variation in this gene, which means that they can't metabolize caffeine so well and others have different variations in the gene, which means that they metabolize caffeine really quickly. So we're all very different in how we handle caffeine. Research has shown that three cups of coffee a day, that is 300 milligrams of caffeine a day or more, may actually have unhealthy effects on our bodies. This caffeine may actually stimulate our central nervous system, it can cause headaches, it can put a lot of stress on our hearts, our liver, our kidney, it can cause anxiety, irritability and issues with sleep. You may have heard of something called a half-life, that is how long it takes the body to break down half the dose. The half-life for men is actually a lot shorter than it is for women in terms of breaking down caffeine. It takes men about four to six hours for women who are not pregnant, eight to 12. And guess what? If you're pregnant, the half-life can be up to 22 hours. The interesting thing is that CYP1A2 is also found in the endometrium, that is the lining of the uterus, which I actually find quite interesting. There are no studies that really say that caffeine interferes with ovulation or implantation. But when making recommendations around caffeine, again, I always go back to the individual and what is good for that individual. And of course, talking about the issues with half-life in pregnancy. The caffeine does cross the placenta and if it acts as a CNS stimulant in you, it will do the same in your baby. So I recommend minimizing the amount of caffeine you have. And how about men and sperm and caffeine? Well, actually, there's quite a lot of evidence that says that caffeine actually speeds up sperm. It increases their motility. It's important to make a clear distinction between the caffeine you consume in coffee and the caffeine you consume in soft drinks. There is no reason to consume soft drinks. They're full of sugar. They're full of artificial flavorings, colorings, which you don't need ever. So please avoid soft drinks. Thank you for watching Dr. Tash TV. I hope you've learned a little bit about CYP1A2. If you've liked this episode, please share it with your friends and I'll see you next time.